following is a brief demonstration of the interactive features of the Envisioning History World War II platform using the Palantir software. The focus of this video is analysis of existing historical data. Watch for new videos in the future that will illustrate more features and stories of the Envisioning History platform. The data sources used for this demonstration are limited to the official chronology of the U.S. Navy in World War II, public domain documents available from the Naval History and Heritage Command, and the U.S. Army World War II chronology. We'll start with a simple word search by typing in the word kamikaze into the search bar, then clicking on search. Notice that if entities, events, and source documents appear in the search results on the right. We'll explore the distinction between these objects later. For now, let's select the Explore All Results Under Events. In the left panel, we see the list of the events with the USS LaGrange kamikaze attack on August 13, 1945, showing in the browser pane to the right. Notice that the Japanese flag appears as the icon. Our convention is that the icon for events is the national flag of the initiator. The ships you'll see later have their respective national flags for the icon. We'll look at the folders and feeds helper with all the search results. Click on the search we've just created, then add its contents to the map. In the map view, we see the kamikaze attacks from our search arranged geospatially with the temporal distribution of the attacks in the timeline panel at the bottom of the screen. The right-hand pane, called the histogram, shows there are 359 events divided by the ontology categories we've established. Those called attack, battle, skirmish are attacks where the targets were damaged, while destruction sinking events are where the target vessels were sunk as a result of the attack. We see that of the 359 attacks, 36, or about 10% of the attacks, resulted in sinking of, of ships. This tracks with most analyses, which show approximately a 13% sinking rate. Now let's create a time filter by creating a box in the time scale. Then we'll slowly drag the filter across the scale. What we see is the island hopping progression of the Allies toward the home islands of Japan. Initially, we see kamikaze attacks against the U.S. diversionary raids off Formosa, followed by the invasion of Leyte and the Battle of Leyte Gulf in late October 1944. Then we see movement up the Philippines chain to Palawan Mindoro, followed in January 1945 by the Battle of Lingayen Gulf and the invasion of Luzon. Following a brief lull, we see limited attacks around Iwo Jima in February 1945. We then see a major series of attacks around Okinawa, lasting over three months as the U.S. invasion began on April 1st, 1945. We should ask why there are relatively few attacks around Iwo Jima. There are many reasons, but one may be the relative distance from any air bases ashore. We can measure the distance from Iwo Jima to the nearest landmass controlled by Japan, and we see it's around 1,100 kilometers, or about 700 miles. In the histogram, we see that 53 of 359 attacks occurred around Leyte, 37 around Lingayen, and 217, about 60%, around Okinawa. Now let's look at a tool called the heat map. This feature shows the density of the attacks, here calculated at a radius of about 50 kilometers. Moving the cursor over the areas shows the relative density in the scale at the bottom left side of the screen. Turning off the heat map and returning to the map, we'll zoom in on Okinawa. Looking at individual events, we see a title pops up when the cursor is placed over the event. Double clicking on the symbol launches the browser view for, the, for that event. We see that in this event is a kamikaze attack on the destroyer USS Kidd. Clicking on USS Kidd, we go to the data page for the ship itself. Scrolling to the bottom, we see several photographs of the USS Kidd, including the website of the USS Kidd Memorial in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now let's put all of these events onto the graph view, a blank palette that allows us to look at relationships. We again see our 359 events, the timeline below, and the histogram on the right. Now we'll right-click on the entire selection and perform a search around for linked entities. Now all related entities, that is the ships, appear with arrows linking to the associated events. We also see on the histogram the ship types. 
we see that our data shows 97 destroyers and 23 destroyer escorts combined almost 40 percent were the targets of the attacks now let's look for one specific ship the uss franklin we see one square is highlighted let's drag it to the side and double click on it to open the browser tab here we see the ship's data franklin specifications appear on the left and related events entities and 15 documents appear on the right we can also scroll down and see a number of photographs and a video of the actual bomb attack. Now we go back to the graph and perform a search around on the Franklin to delete everything except the Franklin. Performing a search around on, the, on Franklin and selecting all, we see all the events, documents, and entities in the database related to the Franklin. Here we see the famous March 19, 1945 event that severely damaged Franklin and resulted in the award of the Congressional Medal of Honor to Father Joseph O'Callaghan. Double-clicking on the event, we see the details as well as three related documents. Particularly interesting is the full text of the Navy Bue Ships War Damage Report on all the damage as incidents to the Franklin. By clicking on the document, we go to the section of the report on the 19th of March bomb damage. This demonstration illustrates a few of the capabilities of the education tool we are developing in Envisioning History. Visit our website frequently to see new demonstrations or volunteer to help at www.envisioninghistory.org.